Hey developers, today we're going to look at Express. We're going to learn it in about 10 to 15 minutes. And at the end, you should be able to create your own Express server, be able to create a REST server, have clients connect to it, have information being sent back. It's going to be awesome. Make sure you stay all the way to the end so you can learn all about it. And if you guys are watching, if you guys like Express, leave a comment below. I would love to see comments. I'd love to see everybody talk about Express and what they've done in the past. So make sure you do that. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. I've written the Ember.js cookbook and the Vue.js in action published by Manning. If you guys are interested in web development, Node.js, Express, anything like that, make sure you click that subscribe button and then make sure you click that little bell button and you will be notified the next time I do a video. So before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly, available. And that's what's really cool about .tech domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available. And the .tech domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like Hollywood.tech, Viacom.tech, even personal sites like AustinEvans.tech. So if you guys are interested and you want to search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off on one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and go ahead and pick up that domain name. Thanks. Okay, so here we're going to begin and I'm going to talk a little quick and fast. If you guys are lost at any time, make sure you pause that video or rewatch the section a few times. But if you don't know, Express is a fast and opinionated minimalist web framework for Node.js. And what I mean by that is that you can create servers out of it. Remember uh, in the front end, you connect to a back end. This is an actual back end. We're not using some paid service somewhere. You can create your back end and it is really easy. And one really nice thing about it, it's in JavaScript. Yes, JavaScript. So you can write JavaScript in your front end and in the back end, and you can create a fully featured functional server out of it. And before we begin, make sure you have Node installed. I'm actually using 13.12 as of this recording. And what's nice about that, it actually supports ES6 imports. And what I mean by that is instead of using the require syntax, we're going to use ES6 imports where we can during this tutorial. And I really think that's the future of doing imports in Node. So keep that in mind. And if you don't already, make sure you install Node. All right, and I'm using Visual Studio Code and one more little tidbit, I'm using the REST client. So this is a really neat tool. It's an extension in VS Code that allows us to connect to a backend server and send posts, requests really easily to it and we'll see it inside VS Code. And this makes it a little bit easier for me because I don't have to open up Postman or another app or curl it on the command line to show you actual messages going to our server that we're creating. So if you're following along, make sure you install the REST client. It's also almost has a million downloads. That's crazy. Okay, I'm in an empty folder right now. You can see here. And now we want to start. So one way to do it, and I'm gonna use NPM because I'm using Node. This is the Node package manager. If you're using Yarn, I believe it's very similar if you're a Yarn person. So I'm doing npm init. It's gonna ask me the name, express, version number, description, entry point. We're gonna assume it's index.js. That's where we're gonna do. Test command, git repository, author. I'm just gonna hit yeah, enter all the way through. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna create a package.json. And so here's the default. One thing I like to do is add a start. So this tells it what to do. So this is gonna say, when you start it, run the index.js file. So we don't have to keep on continuously typing this command over and over again. And that's good. Now, if you were gonna be really smart about this, we can read, um, create something like, uh, install something like NodeMon that would automatically refresh anytime the files change. I'm not gonna do that in here, maybe later. Okay, now the next thing, of course, we need to install Express. So npm install Express. So that will install it into our package.json and it'll basically install a bunch of node modules. So here's our node modules, it's very, very big. Okay, now we can create our index file, index.js. And to start off, I'm just gonna do a console log, hello world. Did we do this right? World, there it is. And 
And since what's cool is since we added the start into our package.json, all we need to run is npm start. We don't have to write npm run start. So here it is. It ran hello world, misspelled. That's fine. Awesome. So now we have uh, index.js. Obviously, we want to do something more relevant than just hello world. So now we need to do imports. Remember how I said that we're using the latest version of Node, and it actually supports uh, ES6 imports. So instead of using something like require, we use something like import. And you may be more familiar with import if you've been running apps in the front end. So that's why I like to use it. Now, is as of this time of this recording, it is experimental but you can enable it and it's enabled by default. So you just have to put in type here into your package.json and then put in module. And that'll tell it to use ESX modules, which is cool. Now I can do things like this, import express from express. Cool, so now I have express installed and now I can do things like this, const app equals express and I can do things with it. Now this express has a bunch of functions that we can run on it. And what we really wanna do is we want to, in this tutorial, we're gonna look at the four different HTTP verbs. So you may have heard of git, there's git, there's put, post, and delete. And in the rest world, usually your HTTP git is how you get information. HTTP put is how you usually change information. Post is how you um, post information or add information and delete is how you delete information. Now we're not going to create a fully functional REST server. We're just going to kind of talk to these different endpoints. Now, if to do that, it's really easy. All you need to do is app.git for git, app.post for post, app.delete for delete, and app.put. Those are the four functions. And that makes it really simple. That's how you do a git, a post, delete, and put. So let's start with git. So obviously we want to do a hello world because that's what we always do. Now that to remind you, got to remember git actually has uh, three different functions here. First is the path. So we're going to say that the the main path is slash. It's basically the main path of the web server we're going to create. And then it actually has middleware, which we're going to skip here because we can overload the function. We can have three parameters or we can have two. If you have two, the second one is always the callback. And this is gonna have a request and a response. I always forget which goes first. Yep, request response. And then uh, you can send things back. So a request is all the information that's coming in. And this request ha object has things like uh, query. So that's like the query um, that comes through it. It also has params, that's like the parameters that comes through it. Um, we're not gonna worry about the request right now, but what we wanna do is just send some information back. So we have rest here, this is response. Oops, I'm gonna cancel that. We're gonna do send, and then we're gonna send a hello world. Cool, now we just need to make sure that we listen. And I didn't add this in here, but we can do a port here, 3000, and I'm gonna let listen on port. And then we're going to just, we can, this is a callback here, so we can say, I don't know, console log listening on port, uh, port. Cool, so now it should work. Let's, let's run npm start. All right, so you see here it's an experimental warning, the ESM module loader is experimental. Well, it, it is, so hopefully it works. But now we can open up localhost. 3000, cool. So you can see here, it says hello world. So we know we're talking to it. Now let's say we wanted to actually use our handy dandy, uh, we can actually use our handy dandy rest extension. So to do that, we just type in git, type git. We'll put in the, the address. We know it's localhost 3000. And then we need to save this and I'm gonna save it as a http.rest. And when you save it like that, you all of a sudden get this send request here. So if I hit send request, it opens up another uh, side here and we can see our status, the content type, content length, and connection. Hello world. So that's cool. Products.js 
And now let's say we want to actually send this JSON back instead of the um, hello world here. So I'm just going to comment that out. I'm going to do rest.json this time. And I'm going to put in products. So let's see if that works. Saving it. I'll have to stop and restart our server here. And let's see if this works. Cool. So you can see here that it, now we have this JSON that's being returned. If we refresh this, yep, here's our JSON that's being returned. Now let's say we wanted to try to just return back one of these instead of all three. So um, we can actually do something cool here. We have this request object. We haven't really looked at it yet, but the request object has a few things on it. And one of it is a query in params. So we have the query, um, we have the, the params and the query. So the params is the actual um, parameters that come through. So I could do something like this. I can put a colon here an ID and that tells you it's a certain params that you have to send through. So let, let's do product slash ID just to make it a little easier. Products ID. And then and from here, I'm going to go back to my send and just take a look at what that looks like. So so we can do this. We have requests.params. And if we do it like here, and we do a rest send again, we can get, uh, let's see here, that didn't work. Save it. Oh, I see. We need to go to slash products slash one. And we'll save it and we'll send it. And cannot get products slash one. Oh, we got to stop and restart the server. And now we'll try this again. Cool. So now you can see this is actually the uh, the params that we get sent over. So since we know request.params has an ID, we could do something like this. We could do rest.json. We can do products.find. And then in our find, we have uh, a callback, which is a um, a callback function here, arrow function. And we can return something that equals uh, request.params.id equal equal equals, and this will be id here, id. And this will be id dot, actually, so let's make it product, product.id. So let's see if that works. We'll stop it. We start the server. I'll rest. We'll send it. Oh, didn't find anything. So let's see what we did wrong. Okay, I actually found the issue. So in this request.params is actually a string. So if I just put plus right here, this should change it to a number. Now if I restart the server and oops, let me save it. I'll restart the server and then go back to HTTP REST and hit send. Cool, now it just returns that one that we wanted. So if I change this to two and I uh, stop and restart the server. Actually, I don't think I need to stop restart there. Yep, here's two. I'll put three there. Cool, so it's now returning just the uh, product that we send over in the params, which is really cool. Now let's try to do some real quick, let's do an app.post. If we do an app.post here, Let's do it to, I don't know, add. And then once again, we'll have a request and response. And now we can do something with this data. And I wanna see if I can send some data in a post and have it show up here. So I'm gonna do an rs.send and I'm gonna do this request and it actually has something called body. So you think this would work. This body is what comes over in the post request. So let's create a post request. We're gonna put three stars, uh, three, hash marks here and we're going to do a post. We'll do HTTP localhost 3000 and this time we're going to go to add. And what's cool about this is now since um, we're using uh, since we're using this plugin here extension I can actually do content type I think it's content type equals application JSON and now I can put in what I want here. So I can put uh, let's put a title test and a ID of, I don't know, five. So now if I do this add here, so now I have this new 
request slash add. I'm gonna restart the server. And if I send it here, you can see here I don't I don't see anything return back. So that's kind of weird to think, well, request body, didn't you send over in the body this test? Shouldn't it come over? Well, that's where uh, really nice about it Express is there's something called middleware. So if we look at the official documentation, you go to resources and utility middleware, there's all this uh, really important middleware that can do body parsing, cookie parsing, cookie session, cores. And essentially what happens, there's actually this, this is, you can overload this function. Like I said, it has three parameters instead of two. The second one is the middleware and that gets run before this function gets run. So that's where you would put things like authentication, cores, things like that. So we can actually add in the body parser, which will allow us to look at multi-part body information that gets sent over in a post request. Now in the previous, in, in long time ago, you actually used something called body parser, but with the newer versions, you can use, uh, it's actually built in. And to do that, you'd have to do app.use, and then you put in express.json, and then you do app.use express.url encoded, and then it recommends you do this extended true. And now it should work. So if I stop it, restart it, and I run the HTTP request again, actually now it's giving me an error that there's a token error. So that's probably because this is not real JSON. So now I fixed it, let's try it again. Okay, so what, what happened here is I did a send on a post, but normally a post doesn't return anything. It just returns a status code. So I could do a console log request.body.id, and then I could send a status back if I wanted to. Uh, send status, and I, I don't know, I could send a 200 back. So let's try that. And if I go back to HTTP REST, send it. Cool, I get an okay back, and it console log the five in the on the bottom here. So that's that's how you do a post. You do something similar for put. Let me ask. Let me show you guys real quickly how to create a custom middleware. So I'm going to create a function called mid, and in the mid, it's going to have three things: have a request, response, and next. Next. So now I can do things like I can console log the request dot body if I wanted to, or console log request dot params if I wanted to. And then I always do this next at the end, and that actually does the callback for it. So now since I have this one here, let's say in this ID here, I wanted to just log everything out. I can add it as a middleware, mid right here. Oops, mid, if I can type right. There we go, so that should be a middleware. I'm gonna restart, stop and restart our server. And if I send the request now, I get an error because I misspelled console log, which should be console.log. There we go. I'll stop it, restart it. And now I'm going to send it again. Cool. So now I have my ID3 there. So you can see here, this is what's being console logged out. If I change this to, I don't know, add in uh, Eric equals five and then send it, you can see this ID is three. Um, oops, uh, excuse me, request.query, that's what I want. So instead of request.body, oops, let me try this so I can do this. Query? That should show me my query. I'm going to start it again and then send it. Cool, so now you see my query and my params coming through. All right, so that is my quick express, uh, express tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Enjoy.